So in this section, we'll take a look at just some of the things possible with the new anamorphic queen gaff. So if you've ever seen street art where you have to stand in a certain position and then the painting comes to life and takes on kind of a 3D realistic view, this is a technique I've employed for this gap. When combined with sleight of hand, it really can take your magic to another level. So the angles are pretty good, but there is a sweet spot. And I'd recommend that you perform to four or five spectators maximum. And these guys are going to be on your right hand side, kind of just under 90 degrees. So like I say, there is a sweet spot, so let's take a look. So you want to practice in the mirror to get this just right. But here's what to think about when showing your spectators. So if you imagine there's a line that runs through your arm here, and it's going to connect with this corner here, and then it's going to run straight out the opposing corner. So that's the line that you want to show your spectators. Now, the kind of pitch of the deck is fairly important as well, so you want to keep this kind of parallel to the floor and kind of parallel to your spectator's uh, view. Like I say, you can get away with quite a lot here, but like I say, practice in the mirror and you'll find the sweet spot. And then just remember to point this line at your spectator's eye view. So my main tip would be to keep this hand locked. So you don't want to be doing any movement of the card, any kind of twisting around. You want to keep this kind of locked when you're showing your spectators. You can give it kind of like a floaty feel and you can move your wrist a little bit, but none of this, none of this, and definitely no buckling the card or moving the card around. This needs to stay fixed and permanent on top of the deck. So you don't want to show the spectator this card for too long. The idea behind this is to get them to question what they've just seen. Uh, so don't show this too long before you then kind of vanish it and then make it reappear. So just show it for maybe five seconds maximum. So you might like to try using the flipbook animation before you do this trick. And this is to add narrative and strength to your performance. So you can say you're gonna put them in a trance which is gonna allow them to see things that they might not ordinarily see. So next I'm going to show you a few routine ideas and kind of slight combinations uh, that I've found so far. So this is quite a new concept and I'm still exploring and having lots of fun finding all the various possibilities you can do with this gaff. So let's get started. So X-ray allows your spectator to magically see the queen through the deck before it instantly jumps back into reality. It's an easy to do miracle that requires little to no sleight of hand. So it works using the anamorphic illusion technique, but with the addition of the queen side jogged in the deck, it really sells a very magical moment. The reactions this gets are crazy, and I fooled myself so bad in the mirror the other night. This trick is killer, trust me. Let's have a look. Here's how you get set up for x-ray. So you're gonna take the deck and you're gonna flip it face up. Then you're gonna take your double backer and you're gonna place that on the face of the deck. If you don't wanna use the double backer, you can just turn any indifferent card down. But I'm just gonna use the double backer for now. You're then gonna put queen gaff and then you're gonna put your regular queen on top of that and then that's going to get turned over as a double. So from this way, you've got the queen gaff with this part facing towards yourself. You've then got the regular queen, and then you've got any indifferent card, or use the double backer on a face up deck. So that's how to get set up for x-ray. Here's how to perform x-ray. You're going to start with your double on top of your indifferent card, and that's going to be ready for a double lift. So you can do any double lift you like, but the idea is to out-jog this card so you flash this red to your spectator. That's a very key point. So next, you're going to move your little pinky down, and this is the most important point of this. You're going to move your little pinky down as far as you can get it. So this is a really key point, because in a minute you won't be able to get the queen to pass the pinky unless you move that down. So don't forget that. 
So next you're going to push this queen flush with the deck and then apply a little bit of pressure between the thumb and first finger and you're going to strip the top card off. So that's all you're going to do, but you're going to do that with the addition of kind of like a necktie. So you're going to just angle the deck up so the spectator can't see this. So I'll run through that. So you can do a double lift, leaving the queen out jogged. You're going to move your pinky down and then we're going to move up. I'm going to push the queen flush as I move the deck up and then I'm going to strip that top queen off and then I'm going to show the spectator. So from here, you're going to not want to reveal this at all straight away. So this needs to stay out of view from the spectator. You're then going to place the queen roughly about the middle and you're going to want to do this in a smooth action and this is why we move the pinky out of the way. So you're going to place it through and you're going to line it up with the artwork on the deck here. So you can see this little point of the heart needs to be in just a little bit and then you want to leave just a portion of that heart sticking out and you want to align this black border with this edge of the deck on both sides so it needs to be square and then you can see you get this really nice look. I'll just show you the grip underneath, the three fingers are curled underneath so don't leave these awkward sticking out looking nasty, these fingers are curled under the deck when you're holding this and the grip really is between your pinky and the heel of your the heel of your hand here, so everything is gripped here with just these fingers curled out of the way and, that's, and the thumb runs along the edge here, so that's how you want to display the deck when it's in this position. So let me just run through that once more. Start with a double, turn the double over, make sure you show this bit, pinky moves down, finger pushes flush as you move up and strip the queen out. You show your spectator, and then you're going to put that into the deck, into the position I just described. So from here, you're going to bring your hand over, and this is to cover this as you bring the angle down. So from here, you're going to show your spectator, and you're only going to allow them to see this part as you drag back. You don't want them to show any here. So from here, hand comes over, and you're going to really kind of, this is the magical moment, so you can really milk this. And then, you want to really relax now, let this moment sink in for your spectator, but you don't want to show this for too long. So you're going to come over your right hand, and you're going to grip everything underneath, three fingers along this side, and your thumb is just going to be on this white part. You don't want to put your thumb on this, because that's going to ruin the illusion. So you're just going to grip the border here, and you're going to re-grip. So from here, you come over, and then to get this queen out, there's a couple of ways to do it. I'll show you my favourite way first. And it's going to, you're going to basically, if I take this queen out of the way, you're just going to kind of flip this deck over. So kind of up to speed, and you do it, but a little up and down motion, so it's just going to be that. You're going to flip the deck over, it's that easy. But with the addition, of, with the queen inside, you're going to regrip here, hold, and then as you do the flip, your thumb is going to grip and contact the queen, and then you're going to push this queen up as the deck gets flipped. So that's all that's going to happen. So I'll run for once more quickly. Queen is in the middle of the deck. You're going to come and regrip, regrip, and then up, and then down, and the queen will get popped out. You can then turn that over, and turn that over, and then you can spread and move on with any routine you like. And because we started with the, the, the deck face up, when you do the flip with the queen, you're back in position so you can move on with any routine you like. So if you don't want to do the, the snap at the end, there is an additional way you can finish, or an optional way you can finish. So you're going to be here, you've just done the reveal, let that sink in for a second, and then what's going to happen underneath, these two fingers are going to push this queen out. So it's going to slide out like this. So you've done the reveal, you can then bring your part hand over and you're just going to push this out and the middle finger is going to kind of ride, ride with the card in palm and then you're just going to deposit that on top to make it jump back into reality. So I'll just do it once more. So the card is in position, you've just done the change, you're going to come over, 
It's going to slide out into palm and then you're going to deposit back on top. For me, to use this gaff as part of your ambitious card routine is a no-brainer. You can add it in during any phase of your personal routine to give your ambitious card an unexpected twist. So I'll show you a very simple way to implement it into an ambitious card routine, but I encourage you to adapt this and then see how it fits into your personal ambitious card routine. So like I said earlier, using this as part of your ambitious card is a no-brainer. It's going to add a completely unexpected twist to your routine. So here's just a very simple way, uh, so you can see just one way you can introduce it and make it fit into your routine. So we're going to say this is the kind of selected card, and we're going to have the gaff on the bottom of the deck, so with this part towards yourself. So then let's just say, for instance, we'll do the first two phases of a routine. So you're going to do your, your Marlow tilt. It's going to get pushed into the deck. You can then snap to show the queen has jumped back up. Wow. We'll turn it over. You can then give that to the spectator to place back into the deck. And it magically jumps back up to the top. Big reaction here. So what you're going to do while they're reacting, you're just going to flip the deck over and necktie it. So that's really easy, so snap, snap, you show the reveal, there's a massive offbeat here, you're just going to flip the deck over and you're just going to neck tie it. From here you're going to really focus on the queen, you're going to move your pinky down like in x-ray, because this is what we're going to do now, and then you're just going to go into the, the second part of the x-ray effect, where you position the queen in and then you're just going to come down and you're going to show them that they can actually see that it sinks through the middle of the deck. And then you can just flip this all over again using the technique I showed you and bring the queen back up to the top and then you're in perfect running order to move on with your ambitious card routine. So snapped is a highly visual piece of magic where the queen is dealt onto the top of the deck and it instantly sinks through. You then riffle the cards and it jumps straight back up to the top. So this one's called snap and this is because it uses two very kind of snappy moments. You've got the Leonard Green snap deal and then you're going to snap the queen back into real life. So you can use any double you want for this but this is my preference and this is because it gives it another kind of visual moment at the beginning, but also it, it gets you in preparation for the Leonard Green snap deal, so you can really pick that card up easily. So you're going to start with the gaff this way to your spectators this time, and your regular queen on top, 
that's going to get turned over and ready for a double lift. So how to do this double? Your thumb is going to come over and contact the back of these two cards. It's going to push it forward slightly as your middle finger then grips. Your index and ring finger are then going to go underneath this card and you're going to pick up. So you've done kind of up to speed you're here. Now what's going to happen, you're going to build up a little bit of pressure and your thumb is just going to release and that card is going to get snapped forward. So speed here, it's going to get snapped and that double should stay aligned with a little bit of practice. So just do it casually and it will always stay aligned. You're then going to re-grip with your thumb and middle finger of the left hand and like I say this is so you can then come over and do the snap deal very easy without, without having to re-grip. And what you're going to do, you're going to come over and pick up with your thumb on top and your index finger underneath and your kind of ring and middle finger are going to kind of just grip underneath very lightly. So you're going to come over and then you're going to pick this up and what you're going to do, you're going to flash the back of this card to the spectator and then on the way down your fingers underneath are going to do this, they're just going to separate the double very slightly. So you're just pushing the, the bottom card down by about an inch and a half. So again, we've done the double, we're going to come over, pick up, you're going to flash the back, and then as you come down, you're going to separate the double a bit, and then you're going to do the snap deal. So what's going to happen here is you're going to snap this bottom card, the gaff card, in line with the deck as you perform the snap deal. So this card is going to get caught on your third finger and your middle finger and ring finger are going to come back and then this is going to get put straight into a tenkai palm here as you kind of reveal. So I'll do that one more time. So you come over, you pick up, it comes up, you flash the back, it gets separated, you come down and you snap and then that goes into a tenkai palm. So this, without this card, this is all you want it to look like. So you basically turn over the card, pick it up, and you deal it on top of the deck. So that's the kind of actions you're trying to mimic. So again, the double, pick up, separate, snap deal, straight into Tenkai as you action the kind of reveal. So this is in Tenkai now and I kind of just keep my hand a little loose and I keep it above the spectator's eye level because all their focus is here so they're not looking at this hand whatsoever. So you've, you've done the snap, you come into Tenkai and then when you're ready, this is what's going to happen. You're going to come over, you're going to build a little bit of pressure and that's going to get kind of shot off here. Or you can just ditch it but I like the, sh the shoot because then it kind of frees your hand up and all you're going to do is give this, the thumb goes on top and just give this a a snap and you'll bring that queen back into reality. So I'll run over that one more time slowly so you can see what's going on. So the gaff is positioned this way, you've got a little pinky break under the two cards, you're going to come over, snap off the double, re-grip, you're then going to come over, perform the snap deal, as this card aligns with the back, it gets snapped, picked up by the middle and third finger and then it's going to move into Tenkai. When you're ready, you're going to come over, deposit that card as your thumb goes on top and you snap it back into real life. Here's a nice flowing sequence 
that can make the spectator feel like they go back in time. This is because both of the visual moments, kind of the actions mimic each other. So you kind of go in forward and then in reverse to do the reveal. So here's the setup for this one. You're going to start with a regular queen and then you're going to have the gaff queen with this part facing towards yourself on top. Now we're going to use a push off double lift for this one. So I'll show you a push off double lift quickly. It's just there, that's kind of roughly how I do it. So you're going to push it off and then you're going to turn it over. So what we're going to do, we're going to steal the gaff card out in between those motions. So I'll run through it quickly. So you're going to push off two cards as one. And this part is going to use as kind of like a pivot point, just in your thumb here. So you're going to push off your middle finger and thumb and they're going to grip this outer right corner. And your first finger goes on top and then that's going to get twisted as you move forward. You can then snap that off the thumb as it turns over this way, so it kind of it's lining up on your thumb, and then you can let it drop onto the top of the deck. So once more, you're going to push off, it's going to get turned over, snapped, and then turned over once more and on top of the deck. Okay, so that's basically the push off double lift I use for this. And now with the addition of stealing the card out, so we're going to push off, we're going to come forward, it's going to get to this position here, and as it's flipping down, we're going to steal this card into Tenkai as we rotate the Queen. So one more time with this one. So we can do push off double, it's going to get turned over, and then your thumb is going to push forwards, and these fingers are going to kind of peel in this way. So it's going to steal it out. And then this first finger is going to rotate the queen as well to give some misdirection as you display to your spectator. And then that card is in Tenkai. So that's the first part. I'll run over it one more time quickly. So we're going to do kind of like a push off double. It's going to get turned over. And then this queen is going to get spun as that card is stolen to Tenkai. So from here, you can, you can just pause a second and you can come over, that card can get fired off Tenkai as you reel. And then I like to come straight back, push forward, and then you're going to go into an Erdnase colour change. So this is nice kind of flowing routine, because uh, you're going to show here, it's going to get stolen off, you're going to show here, and then you're going to instantly come back and it's going to jump straight back into your alley. So. So this one's a little bit more tricky and requires that you can do a perfect duck change. So if this card kind of rattles around when it lands, it's going to kill the illusion. So you do need to be able to do a perfect duck change. It's just like a nice free stage routine. Instead of just uh, making the queen vanish and then reappear, this kind of adds uh, a nice flow and some variation to this concept. So the setup for this is you're going to have the queen gaff 
with an inner shadow towards yourself and that's going to go turned over on a face down deck and on top of that you're just going to have the regular queen of hearts so that's your setup no break needed at this moment so what you're going to do you're going to thumb over just the top card and then you're going to turn it over to display to the spectators as you're displaying underneath you're going to just get a little pinky break under the gaff card so that's kind of just done casually you can display as that card is over this part of the deck you're just going to pop up and get a little break so you can then turn the queen down and then you're going to do this nice little uh, convincer that there's just one card and that's by pushing forward here so all you're going to do behind is just contact with your thumb as it looks like just your finger is pushing this card forward but if your finger was just to push the card forward it would only push the top card where in reality you want to push that whole double forward so it's just a nice way to sell the fact that it's a single card so you're going to turn over, get your break put the queen back on and then you're going to push that card forward so the reason we push this card forward is so then you can then just lever it up slightly and then you can really grip this easily for a duck change so that's kind of why we do this first part so for the duck change I'll run through this quickly but you kind of should know this I'm guessing so you're going to pick the card up with your middle finger and your thumb and you're going to cause a little bend in this card and the top finger is going to apply pressure on top so from here the finger position is quite important so this middle finger is, is kind of off half and then the thumb is just around half here. So to perform the duck change, you're gonna come up, a little bit of pressure with your finger, and you're gonna build up tension, and then you're gonna release with your middle finger, and that card will get turned and flipped over. So like I say, you wanna be able to do this perfectly, so that you can just snap, and it will land on the deck without too much. If this card starts wiggling around, it's going to kill the illusion. So you want to be able to do duck change so it lands kind of flush every time. Something like that. So from here, you want to, we're going to vanish this card. So I used kind of like a, a, Cardini, a Cardini snap change here to take it to the bottom. So I've also come up with a kind of variation on this, and this is because I don't want to re-grip. Once I've done the duck change, I don't want to then come over and re-grip in preparation for a, a kind of Cardini vanish, right? So what I've come up with is, if we're going to do the duck change, and then let that sink in for a moment, and then you're going to just put a little pressure with these fingers, which is going to cause these, this top card to kind of just come up from the side a little. You can then pick up with your thumb. So what we're going to do is kind of a modified Cardini where this is what's happening underneath. You're going to pressure with your thumb and it's going to snap around to the bottom which then allows you to spread the deck. So you don't have to do any of this turning and all this kind of stuff. So again, you've just done the duck change. A little pressure here allows you to pick up just the top card easily. You're then going to come over and do some cover with your right hand as that card goes to the bottom and then you can then spread. From here, we're gonna do John Gustaferro's ballet cut. So perfect for this. So you can go and learn that from John, but just basically, it's gonna look something like this, okay? I'm doing that in slow motion. So from here, it's gonna jump here. And that's to reintroduce the queen. So if you don't wanna do John's cut, you can do a half a deck flip under the cover of your arm to get the queen back. And now this is my favorite move I found using this queen. And this is kind of like a, I kind of learned it from Kevin's, Kevin Ho's smooth operations. He's got some work on the visa change, which is really, really nice. But it kind of uses that technique and it's basically just flipping the deck over and then retaining the top card. That's all it is. But done with the gaff card, it's gonna look like, sorry, these are getting sticky now done with just the top card, it's going to look like that queen pops into real life. And then you can turn it over. And I like to end with another vanish like this, so there was no real queen. So let's just run through that from the top. And yeah. So you're going to start with the gaff, the queen, 
you're going to get a break under those, you're going to push that forward, you're going to do the duck change, you're going to come over and vanish the top card and spread. You can then do the ballet cut to reintroduce the card and then you can do the, the top top pop like this. And then you want to vanish that top card at the end as well. So when experimenting with the queen gaff, I wondered what it would be like if it was a double facer and where, where, where would that lead, what kind of moves can you use. So we're going to use some of our friend uh, double sided stick tape. So you're going to apply the double sided stick tape to the back of the queen gaff and you're then going to stick the regular queen, make sure it's all nice and square, to there. So you're going to left with a, a double facer. And then we're also going to use the double backer as well as the rest of the deck. So here's how we're going to set up. The, the gaff is going to go with this side towards you and the queen face down. And then you're going to put the double backer on top and you're going to get a break under all of that. So this is what double backers are great for. So hiding double faces so we can turn over and then fairly thumb off the queen. From here we're going to put this back on top of the deck, we're going to leave it out job to just a fraction and we're going to do this little pop move which is going to make it look like the queen jumps up and then jumps straight back into the deck. So I'll show you this move quickly, I love this move. Um, so you're going to build up some pressure between your thumb and index finger and these fingers come into play a little bit. You're going to push up with your, with your index finger and then you're going to release pressure you're going to let the tension release from these fingers here and it's going to pop and it will turn over. And the idea is to get this to land flush and neat every time so it's not rattling around. Something like that. So yeah, just practice. It's a really easy move. You'll get that, to, get that to work really quickly. So the other move that works really nice with a double facer is Leonard Green's Top Shot. So you can show the, show the card here and show that it jumps straight back out. So it looks, looks really good with this and works nice with this gap. So a top shot, you can go learn this, but quickly you're just going to build up pressure with your, with your finger against your thumb and it's just going to fly off. So I've got a little tip on the top shot, so you see it, see it done a lot and all these fingers really flay out and it kind of gives the game away. So for me this doesn't have to go miles, so it only needs to go a little short while just to give the appearance of it jumping up. So I build up pressure and I, I kind of pull down, I don't, I don't fl flash out, I kind of try and pull down and it will still do the same thing but you get less finger movement. So from here you see if you just pull down you still get it to pop out but you, you don't get all this kind of flashy fingers. So let's just run through that once more. I'm going to start with a double facer, face down with a little break, queen gaff at this point towards you, double backer on top. Get a break for a double. I'm going to turn all that over. You can then fairly thumb that off and do a little pirouette spin, whatever you want. Place it back on the deck, a little bit out jogged. Then you're going to perform this top pop. And as you do it, you're going to bring your hand down a little bit to get it to kind of 
bigger movement covers, covers a smaller movement. So you're just going to do the pop, wah, come over, re-grip, get ready for a top shot, and then you're just going to do a top shot. Then you can just get another break under the double backer, come over and just turn everything over and you're, you're kind of fair. So we'll just do a couple of run-throughs for that so you can follow along. There's so much to explore with this gaff, and I've only really just begun. So I'm going to continue working on ideas, but if you join our workshop, then I'll let you know when more videos are posted. I'd love to see what you guys create with this. So when you come up with something cool, take a quick video, send it over, and then I'll share it with the mechanic community.